Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me this afternoon is Adam Dorn from the Fitchburg Fire Department. Dorn, how you doing? Great. How are you, Jeremy? Glad to have you on set today. I'm Thanks doing for having wonderful. Me. And uh, we kick things off with this video. And Drew, take it now. Boom. And what we're looking at here is uh, side by side footage uh, of a dry tree and a tree that has been watered properly. <laughs> Correct. And uh, clearly, clearly, there's a uh, slight difference here. Just a slight difference, yes. Um, it's that time of year. It is. I love this time of year. We talk about this stuff every year. And uh, we're really focusing on holiday safety when it comes to trees, candles. Yikes. And uh, not, you know, Thanksgiving's, you know, is the big time for cooking fires and that. But uh, Christmas, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day all follow in with uh, high amounts of fires. They certainly do. Um, yeah. Christmas trees is one of the things that we don't really take a lot of time to think about um, when it comes to safety because it's a Christmas tree. Yeah, it's in the corner or in a room somewhere and we've decorated it and we love the way it looks. You know, there's so many so many memories that surround that Christmas tree. Um, but if we have a live Christmas tree in our house, we need to make sure that we water it every day. Uh, when you bring it in for the first time, you cut a couple inches off the bottom, you put it in the stand, fill it with water right away. That tree will start to soak up the water. Uh, if you don't do that, the tree will start to dry out. And as you saw in the video, it will go up extremely fast in flames once it dries out. Yeah, and even though you guys are super fast at responding to calls, you know, faster than we've ever been, <laughs> that's not going to – that's going to do some damage. It will. Now, closing doors and, and doing some things to prevent that, yeah, maybe that will uh, stop it from spreading. But, yeah, I mean, you're just – you're setting yourself up for a disaster. Right. Um, some of the things to, to re remember when it comes to that is that when you pick a tree, make sure it's fresh. The needles need – to stay on it when they're touched, right? So a great way to test that is if you grab the, the tree branch, right, and you kind of grab a hold of the needles and you kind of pull with the grain of the needle, if you don't have too many in your hand, it's, it's wet. It's still a wet tree considered. If you have a bunch of needles in your hand before you ever take it off the lot, it's probably not one of the best trees out there. But granted, they're all cut a couple weeks in advance to get them here. Um, so, but if you're out cutting yours in the field, right, it's a little different story. Just did it the other day. Yep. And it's, uh, it was a very wet tree to begin with <laughs> because of, because of all the rain and everything, but, right. uh, yeah. Um, and like they recommend, you know, you cut about two inches off the bottom and then you put it in the ba put that base, uh, the trunk in the base and make sure there's at least, uh, three feet away from any type of a heat source when you set it up. So that's fireplaces, radiators, candles heat vents, even uh, some lights. Um, make sure your, your tree is not blocking an exit and make sure you add water to the tree stand every day. That's a big one. People forget about it. People are busy, but water is important for that tree. Yeah, the heat source one I remember talking about and I have a problem with where I put the tree for our house. Um, it only goes in one spot, <laughs> right? It's of course right by the heater. So I close off that vent and yep. uh, try to force the air to go anywhere else but but at the tree but that three foot three foot radius not only counts for heating you know for the your heaters and stuff but candles or right. or anything i mean candles this day and age is it really are we still seeing can i mean i there's I'm, yeah there's still a lot of candles that are being used and i mean that's why some of these companies exist right they're they're making a the product that makes them make a profit and everything else but we also have to remember that while their, uh, their aroma that they may give off is great and they look awesome, it's still a fire hazard in your home, especially when you have pets or little children because it doesn't take much for uh, your pet to walk by and knock over that candle or a child to come up and grab onto that table and tip, you know, basically tip that, that candle over and now they have hot wax on them. Um, that's, that's a huge thing. It's burn hazards, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's it's crazy. What about as long as we're into the uh, lighting sources, uh, your Christmas lights, your holiday lights, yep. your your decorations. This year, I uh, put out a reindeer that I was given um, from the uh, the wife's family, mm -hmm. and I turned it on, and one light uh, smoked right away. <laughs> I was like, "Well, that's good to go." <laughs> no. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> 
I hope you took care of that appropriately. Uh, we will discuss this after the show. Okay. But uh, <laughs> no, I dealt with it. I dealt with it. You, you got it. You got it. But yeah, yeah I mean, we're you got to check those light strand. Even though they're LEDs, even though they, they still have the simple mechanics of what lights are. Still, right. Today. Absolutely. And a lot of times, you know, if they're left out in the weather and the elements for quite some time, the insulation that's around those wires can start to break down. And that alone, once you plug it in, can start to uh, ha- short out and cause a fire that way. Um, always make sure you read your manufacturer's instructions on um, how they're to be used. Because sometimes they do differ from light set to light set. Um, probably a good re- rule of thumb is probably not to plug in any more than two or three strands of lights together before you plug it into the outlet. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I tested that theory this year. Tried... Uh Tried two LED strands and three uh, three old icicle ones. Shorted that right out. Yeah. <laughs> no smoke, no fire, but, uh, yeah, going back and reading the uh, directions on that, the LED one, yeah, was limited to three strands, and that was three LED strands. So right. <laughs> popping it on the other one. The good thing, the fuse is that, you know, then you should look for those ones with yes. fuses on the ends of them. Absolutely. Because that could be, a, I would think, a good deterrent. Yep. What about, I, I always think about the rain. Like, we have the rain, we right. have these things plugged in, <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, what, what do you do I, with the connections? Yeah, do we, are we supposed to cover these things? I knew they do make ground covers and stuff, mm-hmm. but when the one's up in the roof and stuff, what do you, any <laughs> ideas on that there? Yeah, um, so I don't know of any one manufacturer that really has anything that's, like, the best out there. I know when I was growing up, my family, we always took baggies or shrink wrap and wrapped all the, the connections to make sure that they were covered. Uh, so that no moisture would get in there, you know, lots of snow, lots of water. Uh, You're going to have some moisture that builds up and dissipates, you know, just throughout the day. Um, But the big thing is just to make sure that they're covered so that the majority of that moisture does not get in. Fantastic. Well, these are all great tips. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Hopefully we can stay safe, keep you guys uh, in-house, and you guys can enjoy your your holiday dinners or whatever, (laughs) whatever you do over there at the firehouse. Yes. Tell Thanks for I. having us. We appreciate it. I appreciate it as well. That is Adam Dorn, Fitchburg Fire Department. We'll get more tips from him later this month. For now, we'll take a quick break. You are watching Talking Fitchburg.